Are you still in the uh, YouTube? Yeah. Uh, Judah underscore Israel. Let me not be able to get it here. Yeah, it's over there. Should be able to. Let's go to Judah. Let's go do that. Let's go YouTube. Just type in do that on the foot and we'll find it. It'll bring it straight up. Yeah, yeah, but again, I'm going to go to YouTube just like Judah and for Israel. Yeah, and, and it'll come up straight away. Yeah, there's comments here. Yeah, you can put comments up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we don't, when the women put comments up, we don't publish those or scriptures because it's only for the men to put scriptures up. All right, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, you can put comments up, you can ask questions, that's not a problem. But we leave it to the men to post the scriptures, yeah. not for the women, that's all. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can post scriptures. No, 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 no. There's women, there's women, um, there's women, um, <laughs> prophetesses in the, in the Bible. Yeah, they're prophetess, but they're not, they're, 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 they're women prophetess that were prophets to be priests. That's right, to teach. So this is why I say that. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, yeah. so, so posting yeah, scriptures is to teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody, yeah. anyone can be. Yeah. To go to the book of Joel, the Lord said he's going to, so, he's going to put his, uh, make the sons and daughters gonna prophesy in the last day. So anyone from any nation yeah. can prophet, can prophesy, yeah. because the Lord is gonna put the spirit on all nations and the sons and the daughters of all the nations to prophesy in these last days. Any anyone, the Edomites, anyone. Do you think that um, say you've got an Edomite who understands that yeah 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 that they've got any chance of being safe okay. going to him or being in the so let me explain it like this stage. let me explain it like this then anyone that's an actual Edomite yeah. cannot be saved yeah. but we will have Edomites Israelites that will look like Edomites yeah. we'll have Israelites that will look like Chinese Israelites that will look like Japanese yeah. Israelites that will look like Africans yeah. East Indians, yeah. because the Lord scattered us amongst all the nations. So are there people that look like Edomites that could be Israelites? Absolutely. And normally, that's why the Bible says, try the spirit by the spirit. So if you've got an Edomite that looks like an Edomite, so-called white person, that understands the scriptures and is feeling the word that's being taught in terms of who the Israelites are, they're the mark of the beast, spirit, they're more, yeah, yeah it's their yeah. spirit, they're more, they're more likely they're an Israelite. I just found out, but so we don't judge people on what they look like, okay. we judge them on the spirit. So we try the spirit. So if a so called white person came up to me today yes. and talked to me, I'm going to deal with him as I would deal with an Israelite because I don't know if that person is an Israelite or an Edomite until I've tried the spirit. I just found out that my great grandfather, uh -huh. from where. Scotland, Spain. Spain. Could be an Israelite. Yeah, well, the Sephardic Jews are Israelites. Yeah. They are. Oh, okay. Those Sephardic Jews that are in Israel today yeah. are Israelites. The majority of them are Israelites. Those dark, brown skinned yeah. Sephardic that came out of Spain that were expelled from Spain. The, white. Yeah, but him looking white doesn't make him a so called white man. He is probably an Israelite. Well, so, I mean, for instance, the original Scots were so called black people were Israelites. The word Scotland means black man. They were Israelites that lived in Scotland, Israelites that lived in Wales. When Scotland was overrun by the Edomites, then this when they started to start looking. Yeah, 
Yeah. But let me give you an example. What, 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 Bob Marley, Bob Marley's father is what? Well, he looks like a white man. He's a white man, he's a Scottish man. Yeah. But do you think Bob Marley is an Edomite with that spirit that he had on him? Well, this is what I'm saying. Bob Marley is an Israelite, which would make his father an Israelite because his son has the spirit of an Israelite. His father was a Scottish yeah. man. So and sometimes they say you can only be if your father is black. No, yeah. there's no such thing as only yeah, black Israelites black. because yeah. the 12 tribes of Israel come from. It's impossible anyway because. No, no, but it's, it's, what I'm saying, what I'm showing to you here is factual history. How I can do you know that. Do you, how do you know that these tribes are these names? Oh, because we know that through history, through secular history. Yeah, and we no. also know it through Bible prophecy. Yeah. Okay, so. The pilgrims. So how do you know that Gad is a North American name? Oh, because the prophecy about Gad in, in, in uh, Genesis 49 yeah, speaks yeah. about how a truth is going to overrun them. That truth was the US Army. But also, we know that from Gad's living habits. Gad, when the, when the Europeans came to the Americas, they established themselves before racism became a thing, white supremacy. They established themselves and they wrote many books about it. You've got the book James Idea, this book. You've got George Jones. Paul. These are people who live amongst the Native American Indians in North and South America for over 40 years. 40. And over 40 years. And they established that all of their... I mean, over 40 years when? Oh, during the 16th century and 17th century. And they, they were there before then, surely, who? the Native American Indians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the Europeans when they came and, and, lived, yeah, and lived amongst them. Right. They established from all of their customs and their habits that they were the Israelites. They were the ten lost tribes of Israel. From them doing the circumcision, from them knowing the name of the Most High in the Hebrew, Yahweh, from their, what, their customs that they kept. So, for example, when their women were pregnant and they had a baby and they had a child, they had the same customs. It's called the, the law of purification in the Bible, where if, the, if it was a boy child, the woman would be outside of the camp for 40 days. And if it was a if it was a woman child, yeah. baby, the woman would be outside of the camp for eighty days. All right. That's so good. this, but it's not it's it's, it's it's the law of purification in the Bible. Yeah. But so that's it's saying human identity. But they are unclean when they're on their period. Of course they are. A woman is unclean when you're on her period. But it shouldn't because you're unclean during that period. Well, they're, but, but then, well, let me say something to you then. When the, king, when the kingdom of heaven... When is a man unclean? Uh, when he touches a dead body, he's unclean. So let me tell you something. When the kingdom of heaven comes to earth, all the laws and commandments, statutes are going to be established. What, are you going to say? What, what, what do you think you're going to say? Are you going to say... You, you, I always say that to God. I say that's wrong, but that's... But, but, but then you got... Well, you may say that's wrong, yeah. that you may feel that yourself... Yeah. But let me tell you that all of these laws are going to be established. For the Israelites, it's going to be part of their DNA. So whether you make it the first time around before the destruction or, or, or you come, but you're not going to have this. You're not going to have that choice. All the women are going to have children in the kingdom. You see, the mindset that you're in now is not going to be the mindset you're going to be in the kingdom of heaven. All the laws, commandments and statutes are going to be part of your DNA. So you're not going to have to teach your children the laws, commandments and statutes. They're going to know them off by heart. You're not going to have to teach them. Now, whether you make it the first time round before the second death, the destruction, the war of Armageddon, whether you're part of the elect, we don't know. Now, if you're part of the elect, you'll make it the first time round. You're going to be delivered into the chariots with the angels, with Yahweh Shai, our Lord. If you don't, if you die during the destruction or during the times of Jacob's trouble, if you die then, then what will happen to you is that you'll come back into the kingdom as the children of an Israelite. But all of the laws and commandments and statutes, you're going to have to follow them to the T because it's going to be part of your DNA. You're not going to be bucking it. See, like how you're bucking against it now, saying so you think you, you, you don't like it, and you're saying, you're saying that you're saying to the Most High, your creator, all right? You're telling... And, yeah, you can ask a question. You can ask a question, but that's a fact. A woman is un but a woman is unclean when she's on. I can't think. Man, sure. I just said to you when he touches no, the dead body. Lie, no, but the man is lying. Listen, you're that is that's when a man is unclean. Listen, that, those are man, those are man. those are just sins that you're talking about. That's not being unclean. Those are just sins. Okay. But I've pronounced nonsense in your mouth. No, no. Your wife is cheating. 
Oh, no, no, it's not unclean. That's just, that's just a lie. It's that's a but it's not unclean. Unclean is what I just said to you. But anyway, let's forget about that. I'm not going to go into all of that. All I'm saying to you, because you're staying around the houses now. It, no, you are, because I've seen you come in many times before. And, and when you come in, you always bring confusion. So, no, we don't. I'm telling you. You're asking me what the Bible says, and I'm telling you that the Bible says that you're unclean when you're on your period. Now, whether you want to believe that or not, I wouldn't want to touch you. I wouldn't want to touch you. I wouldn't want to touch you. Because the greatest danger, the greatest danger to the Israelite man is the black woman. The greatest danger to us is the black woman. The greatest danger to the so, black woman is the black woman. I, I, I'm not going to go, I'm just hoping that this rain stops off and pull out my Bible. All right. But uh, I'm not going to go in because you've come in before and every time you come in, you bring confusion. No, 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 yeah, you do, you do, you do. Because you know what I'm teaching you. We're going to know about Dan in the kingdom. Why, what happened to Dan? Why is Dan on the kingdom? We're going to know about Dan no, in the kingdom. Yes. Why? We don't know. We're going to find out in the kingdom. But we believe in the spirit that Dan is amongst all of the tribes. The Lord said to Dan, there is no scripture in the Bible that tells you what's happened to Dan. We believe in the spirit because we, we, we let me speak, let me speak, let me speak, let me speak, let me speak. We deal with this thing, faith. Our thing that we do is based on faith. We believe the words of the Most High and the prophets, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So through faith, we believe that Dan is mixed amongst all of the 12 tribes. But I can't say to you definitively, I know that. We're going to know definitively in the kingdom because Dan is not mentioned in the book of Revelations neither. When he thinks about the 144,000, Dan is not amongst them neither. But we just believe in the spirit, Dan, because no spirit dies, basically. Every person that dies, their spirit goes back to the most high. No spirit. So we know all anyway, of the spirits anyway, of Dan yeah. are in heaven and mixed. we believe they're mixed amongst them the, the, the twelve tribes. But we're going to know Definitively in the kingdom. There's many things that, that we are going to find out definitively in the kingdom. That's all I'm saying on that. So a lot of things that our people buck up against here, that's not going to happen in the kingdom. Not for the Israelites. There's going to be a part of your DNA. The other nations, we're going to have to teach them the laws, the commandments, and the statutes. And we're going to have to punish them according to the laws. Are you going to, but you, but this is what I'm saying. You're not right now, you're not in your so called right mind. That's what I'm saying. Of course they're going to be slaves. But, but you might not be an Israelite. This is what I'm saying to you. We have Israelites, we have so-called black people that look like you, that are not Israelites. You may be an Edomite. This is what I'm saying. So you might be my slave, you might be my slave in the kingdom. But you'd have no choice. I'm, I'm what, what are you going to do? There's nothing you could do. <laughs> That's confusing. You would have no choice. You, you're going to have no choice. You'd have no choice. Anyway, I'm going to finish preaching. I think you're going to find that everything that I'm saying is what it's going to be. But like I said, I'm not going to sit here and and, dis and debate this with you, right? Because you've been here many times before. I was just waiting for the rain to stop. Thank you, Lord. My audience is here. I don't, I don't need them to be here. Why not? I don't need one. If you will. if they stop, they stop. Listen to me. This is about the elect. This is about the elect. Many are called, few are chosen. The Lord is only is interested in the elect. So anyway, have a good day. You have a good day. Thank you very much. I am. I'm a nobody. <laughs> take her with you, please. <laughs> yeah, take her with you, please. Take her with you, please. Right. You have a good day, yeah? Just listen to him, just a great stand to God, just another soul, you know. And
you know, that's the same good thing. Okay, so we're going to go into Obadiah chapter one. Blah, 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 blah. See? That's the black woman. Madness. Madness, yeah. Total madness. Obadiah, they always go to Obadiah. Thank you. They always go to uh, Have a nice day. Have a nice day. <laughs> Not one black person is hanging out with you. You alienate people. That's, That's true. true. So you alienate. Have a large day. So, yeah, sir, take her with you, Sam, please. Please, please take her with you. Yeah, please, please, can you take her with you, Sam? Right. <laughs> Even Sam wants you. It's my, let's see, one of my best uh, students. Is he? Yeah, he is. That's good. My best student. All right. So Obadiah chapter 1, we're going to start at the very top here. The vision of Obadiah, thus says the Lord's power, Yahweh, concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from Yahweh. So Obadiah says that we have heard a rumor from Yahweh. And an ambassador, and an ambassador is sent amongst the heathens. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. So an ambassador sent amongst the heathens. So we are the Lord's ambassadors today, sent amongst the heathens to prophesy the downfall of Babylon the Great, the Edomites, and what's going to come upon the nations, the captivity. Behold, I have made thee small amongst the heathens. Thou art greatly despised. So as we can see in these last days, these Edomites are despised amongst the other nations. They're even despised amongst their own people, as we see. The Edomites in Russia despise the Edomites in the West, in Europe, and in America, and in Australia, and in Canada. They despise them. The Edomites that we can say that's in the East despise the Edomites that are in the West. And so do the other nations. So you've got the, the, the countries in Africa despise these Edomites. The East Indians despise these Edomites. The Pakistanis despise these Edomites. Those in the Middle East, the Ishmaelites, despise these Edomites. So the scripture says, I have made thee small amongst the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So Esau now is looked upon as being small amongst the heathen. No one looks at Esau, these Edomites today, and is no more in fear of them. And them themselves know that their shit is coming to an end. They understand that. And this is why I say everything that they are doing, they think they are doing their own will. They are doing the will of the most high. Because the Most High is going to draw them you know what, to the head the in the man, Middle East. A black man was more humble Verse 3. Than it says, the pride, the pride of thine heart has deceived thee. So the pride of Esau's heart has deceived him, has totally deceived them. And this is why they think that they are so above everyone. Because the pride of Esau's heart has deceived them. Thou that dwellest in the crest of the rocks. So why did the scripture say that thou that dwellest in the crest of the rocks? Because the Edomites, they live, they came out of the cave. This is why they call themselves cavemen. So we refer to them as Caucasians because they came out of the Caucasus mountains. So Job speaks about Esau dwelling in the rocks, in the crest, living amongst those in there. So the scripture says, the pride of thine height has deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the curse of the rock, whose habitation is high, whose habitation is high. So why does Obadiah speak about Esau's habitation being high? Remember, all they've done is build all of these skyscrapers and all of these nations have taken on Esau's type of building of the cities. So if we go to China, they build skyscrapers. If we go to if we go to the Middle East, we see skyscrapers. If we come to Europe, we see skyscrapers. So when it says that he's building his high, this is what he does. Thou that dwellest in the crest of the rock, whose habitation is high, that says in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And that's what he says. He says in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And this is what these Edomites think to themselves. They yeah. think, who shall bring me down to the ground? And who's going to bring him down to the ground? The Most High. How's he going to do it? Through his son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai and the angels and the elect of Israel are going to bring these Edomites and their kingdom you know, and their rulership down to the ground. To but they have this pride. So we see this with these Edomites in the West. So, for example, 
What does Putin, when Putin looks at on these Edomites in the West, he sees the exact same thing. And he says, who shall bring me down to the ground? So Putin understands the exact language and how they see and what they see. Who shall bring me down to the ground? Go thou exalt thyself as the eagle. So what is Esau's emblem? It's the eagle. So the eagle is his emblem. The emblem for Esau is his eagle. That's what it is. In his army. So go to the Germans. What did they have? The eagle. What did the Romans have? The Romans had the eagle as well. That was their emblem. The Americans' emblem is the eagle. That's their signum for their army. Europe, the same thing. It's the eagle. This is what they have. The Germans, it's the eagle. Most of these European nations, their emblem is the eagle. And it all goes back to the Roman Empire. Because remember, this is the reincarnation of the Roman Empire that we're living in today. So what we have to understand is that Esau's emblem is the eagle. So Obadiah is speaking about the emblem of Esau. It says, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest amongst the stars, thence will I bring thee down, says the Lord. So how is Esau's nest set amongst the stars? His space stations, his satellites, they're amongst the stars. His nest is amongst the stars. But the Lord said that he's going to bring them down, bring them right down to the ground, to the ground. If thieves came to thee, if robbery by night, how are thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they have enough? If the great gatherers come to them, would they not... Would they not leave some place? And that's Esau. Everywhere they've gone to the four corners of the world, they've stolen, they've robbed, they've pillaged, they've raped. Everywhere they've gone to the four corners of the world. And this is what they chill with. You see, the thing is, it's hypocrisy that's going on here. That's what you got to do, By night, how art thou cut off? Yeah. Well, they have not stolen until they had enough. If so they have not, not had enough, in his the life, Edomites fine, have I not had enough. And, and that's saying. the problem about it. He's they have sinner. not had enough. He's a sinner. So this is what they do. They go everywhere to the four corners of the world yeah. to steal, and to rob, to pillage, to race. So this is why the Most High is coming to take Edom down. And his stronghold in America. He says, how are the things of Esau searched out? How are these hidden things sought out? How are the things of how are the things of Esau sought out in the Bible? This is how we're able to identify who Esau is. We sought him out through the Bible. We search him out through the Bible, and we were able to work out who he is. We come to the point who Esau is. So this is how we know. Can you leave? Can you not? Can you step away from the light, please? Can you please? Can you take? Can you take? Can you take? Can you stay there, but just step away from the mic, all right? Because it's like you're on some sort of crack cocaine. I don't know. You're smoking something. I can see you're some kind of junkie on something, and that's you are. I can see only a cracker could behave like that. Only a cracker would behave like that, and I can see you're a junkie. They do. They do. They gaslight. All right, can you they stop? Gaslight. Can you stop? These can you stop talking to my mic? Can, no, I can, can you take her with you? You are here in, in public oh, space. Gosh, oh, All right, but can you stop giving me my mic? I'm space. I'm trying to stand here. I don't want to challenge you. No, no, I don't want to challenge you. Please don't tell me. So over there, chapter one, verse six, it says, how are the things of Esau searched out? How are these hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy has brought thee in even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. So the men that were at peace with thee have deceived us. And that's what's happened. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. So what we are seeing in Russia is that these Edomites are being brought into this war. So NATO is in this war. NATO is in this war and fighting against the Russians. So the Mosai has brought them down to the border, the confederacy. And prevailed against thee. That's good. They that eat thy breast have laid a wound 
under thee. There is none understanding in him. There is no understanding in these Edomites. So all of the men of his confederacy have brought thee to the border. So what's the confederacy of Esau? The confederacy of Esau is what? The confederacy of Esau is NATO and the United Nations. And they've brought them all to the border to this war. So nothing that they are doing can stop this war from happening. All right? And prevailed against them, but and prevailed against thee, and they are going to prevail against thee. So we know to God, ultimately, that the Russians are going to prevail against these Edomites, which are the Edomites as well, the Russians, but they're going to prevail against them in this war. They that eat thy bread, how you doing, my bless? They that, they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. There's no understanding in Esau. Yes, there is. Shall I not in That's that day, I know shall I not Esau in that day, understanding. shall I not, we're going to stay here. That's right, because you're a crackhead and I don't want this, you You crackhead in my video. Or you are a crackhead. It says that all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee to the border. The men that were at peace with thee and prevailed against thee. Right? Against thee. They have eat thy bread and have laid a wound. They have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not? In that day, says the Lord. So this is what the Lord says. Shall I not say in that day, says the Lord, even destroy the wise men of Edom and the understanding of Edom. Even the understanding of Edom. Right? Shall I not in the day, says the Lord, even yeah. destroy the wise men out of Edom and the understanding out of Mount Esau? All right. You liar. Verse nine. Using the Bible to justify. And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that shall be that shall every one of Mount Esau may be cut off for the slaughter. So every man of my Esau shall be cut off in that slaughter. So the mighty men, so who are Timon? Timon are the Germans. Timon are the Germans, all right? Shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount Esau may be cut off from thy slaughter. For thy violence, and this is the key, right? Obadiah chapter one, verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. And thou shalt be cut off forever for thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Shame shall cover thee. So what was Esau's violence against his brother Jacob? It was taking him in, into captivity, his slavery. And this is what he did. He took him into captivity. All right. Yeah, we did deserve it because the Lord said that we're going to go into captivity. But the Lord is going to punish Esau. The Lord is going to punish Esau. For the violence against his brother Jacob. So for slavery, for the, for destroying the Native American Indian tribes of North, South America and Canada. For the incarceration, for the oppression, for the racism. So the Lord is going to deal with Esau for the violence against thy brother Jacob. Shame shall cover thee and thou shalt be cut off forever. So Esau will be cut off forever in these last days. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was of one of them. So when did these Edomites take us away? So this all goes back to the times of the Babylonian rulership, when the Babylonians then were taken, taken down the Israelites. And that's what happened to them. And the Edomites played a part. The Edomites played the part of taking down the Israelites. So in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captives, his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem. So who were the foreigners that came into those gates? Those were the Babylonians and the Edomites. The Edomites were egging them on. Even thou was as one of them. So the Edomites took sides with the Babylonians in taking down the Israelites. 
So even the Babylonians then today are going to be taken down. Verse 12. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of their distress. So it says, neither, oh, brother, she's on crack, don't worry about her. It says, but thou should not have looked on the day that thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither, he has to keep spinning, neither. Yeah. He has to keep spinning. Can you yeah. get out of my oh, no, 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 don't you dare oh. touch me. Who the hell you think you are? <laughs> oh. I can be I yeah, that's it. Go ahead, that's right. Be there. Be this is what we got here. <laughs> you be there. You say there. Nice but thou shouldest not have looked on thy brother face. in the day which he came. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gates of my people into the day of their calamity. So the Edomites played a part in taking down the Israelites when the Babylonians took down Jerusalem in around, it happened around 600 600 BC, this took place. So it says, but thou, but thou shouldest not have looked upon thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. And that's what they did. They spoke proudly. They took down Jerusalem, the Edomites played a major part in destroying the children of Israel during the time of the Babylonians. So the Lord is going to bring the judgment on these Edomites for what they did. It was a proud thing that they did. So we're going to go to a precept. Psalms 137 verse 7. We're going to go, we're going to read a precept for you. Psalms 137 verse 7. It says, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardest thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that takest and dashes thy little ones against the stones. So, when it says, O oh, daughter of Babylon, it's talking about the United States of America, who are to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewardest thee as thou hast served us. So the Most High is going to reward Babylon the Great, Esau's, Esau's border, Esau's top place. He's going to destroy. That's what he's going to do. Babylon the Great, which is the United States of America, just so we know. So it says, happy shall he be that takes and dashes the little ones against the stones. So the same things that the Edomites did to the Israelites is going to be done to me. And this is what's going to happen. Yeah. So we're going to go back to Obadiah. So that's, that's the precept. That's the precept for Obadiah. Let's go back to Obadiah. So, back to Obadiah, chapter 1. There's only one chapter, verse 12. It says, But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou... It's going to go smoke a pipe. <laughs> Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gates of my people in the day of their calamity. So that happened during the times of the Babylonians' invasion of Jerusalem. All right. Yea, it says, thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity. That was the living cracked. That was the black woman. That was the black woman. The living cracked black woman that came here. Sorry, sisters, man, but that was the living cracked. She's a demon. She's a demon all day long. Listen, she is. She got the spirit of Esau. 
That lady is definitely a demon. The Edomites don't even act like that. This is what I'm saying. That's a demon on her. And at first, I'm trying, I'm talking to her, you know, nicely. And I'm talking to her, you know, respecting her and everything. And then she just went into full demon mode. Into full demon mode. That was a demon that jumped on her. That was a demon that was jumped on her. I, she's no danger to me. But that's a demon family. That's an absolute demon. Absolutely right. Mark McGew. That's a demon in a human flesh, my brother. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm telling you. And it's, it's a sad state of affairs because I've never had that. The amount of so-called white people have come up here and they've dealt with me so respectfully. I've had many conversations out here. But the so-called black woman who, that to me, that's why I said to her, she may look like a so-called Israelite, but I believe she's an Edomite. And when they say that we have these so-called black people that are Edomites, truly that is one of them. That had the demons all over her. Absolutely. All the years you've watched me, you've never ever had anyone act like that. I'm telling you, that's a demon. That was a demon spirit. A demon spirit. That's the wickedness, Roy. I'm telling you, completely. <laughs> Yeah, the devil is on her, hand in hand with so-called, that's what she was trying to quote. I believe she was trying to quote the book of Job. But yeah, she had a devil on her. She had an absolute devil on her, let me tell you. I'm not joking you. I have so much respect out here teaching. No problems, no trouble with no one. I've been out here for over two years teaching in this spot here. And they come and they speak to me. Cool. Even if they disagree with me, it's a respectful disagreement. No one's ever threatened me with violence or anything or called me any names or anything. But that was an absolute demon in full mode. An absolute demon that was. And she'd probably be back. She'd probably be back. Yeah, absolutely. Always a black woman trying to mess up something. Absolute demon. It's a shame. And this is nothing on you sisters, you, know, that you true sisters that are out there, but this is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. This is all I can say. This is what we're dealing with. But anyway, we're going to go back to the scriptures. Even when the rain was pelting down hard, I was hoping that the rain would wash her away. But the demon spirit that was in her said, no, you're going to stay there and you're going to give them as much hell as possible. All right? <laughs> and, then she went, and then she was getting confrontational. That's why I had to turn my back on her. I, thought I, I was leaving a line her to just speak and talk her madness, spew her madness. And then she kept on coming in on the camera. I said, well, let me just put my back on her. But that's what we're dealing with. That's exactly what we are dealing with. An absolute demon. So what can I say? But the spirit of the Lord is on me. So I'm going to continue teaching the word of the whole bunch in the whole child. All right? So she's going for a cup of tea. She's going down to smoke a pint. Cup of tea. She ain't going to, she's going down to smoke a crack pipe. Trust me. Talking about she's got students. She's talking about her fellow drug users. Call them students. Absolute demon that was in every essence. But hey, we're going to do what we do best. We're going to teach the word in the name of Yahweh Bashir Yahweh Shai. So where was we? So we was in Obadiah chapter 1, verse 12. It says, But thou should.